fez a guerra na Royal Air Force e nos serviços secretos britânicos. De figura aristocrática e voz profunda, interpretou as mais horríveis personagens em filmes de terror e chegou ao êxito na pele do inesquecível Drácula. Sonhou a ser cantor de ópera ou maestro, acabou ator talentoso de invejável carreira. Num eterno e versátil mal da fita, com uma voz grave por quem as vítimas suspiram. Internacionalmente famoso, entrou em mais de 200 filmes e trabalhou na Europa e nos Estados Unidos sob a direção da maior parte dos monstros sagrados da realização. No parabéns, como convidado especial, um nome grande da cinematografia mundial, Christopher Lee. Antes de o chamar, tenho aqui três perguntinhas sobre ele que vocês vão tentar responder. Bom, qual é o verdadeiro nome de Christopher Lee? Ou seja, que nome é que ele tem a mais que herdou da mãe? Carandini Lee? Carvalhosili ou Metapatali? Primeira. A primeira, portanto, Metapatali não, não, não. soa bem. E Hugo? Primeira também. A primeira. Em que sítio de Inglaterra é que ele nasceu? Em Londres? Em Stratford upon Avon? Ou em Carraseda de Anciães? Segunda? Stratford upon Avon? E o Hugo? Em Londres. Que reseda de anciães? Ah, em Londres. Em Londres. Em que serviço... Como é que se chamava o serviço secreto onde ele trabalhava? S-A-S? S-I-S? Ou S-P-S? S-A-S? S-A-S? E o Hugo? Primeira também. A primeira também. Ladies and gentlemen. Tenho uma honra imensa em poder apresentar-vos o meu querido convidado desta segunda e terceira parte, Christopher Lee! Because of me. <laughs> oh, all right, okay. I, no, didn't understand, I didn't understand what you said. I heard my name. Uh huh. You know that um, this, for me, this is a dream come true because I had uh, two films that, that I, I saw frequently when I was a kid. One of them was, we say in Portuguese, Vinte Mil Leguas Submarinas with James Mason, based on the, the story from Julie Verne. Uh, how do you oh say yes, uh, twenty thousand leagues under the yes. sea. And yeah. I did, uh, I did James Mason on my submarine. Oh, I heard Captain my Nemo. Yes. Ah. And uh, every week, every other week, yeah. I did Count Dracula. I did you. You have all my sympathy. Yes, I, 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 I almost uh, did the same to you that you did to Boris Karloff. You took his place as, <laughs> as a Dracula. I know that I've you. I've never don't. taken his place. No, no. Nobody has. I know. You know. I know that it's. It's not uh, especially uh, good for you to be to be uh, constantly attached to that uh, to that film to that phase of you, my Hammer Productions. But it's inevitable. You did it so so well. Yes, I think uh, you you have to understand. If you're an actor, obviously, the most important thing is to make yourself known, uh -huh. that people know your face that people know your name, and they put the two together. Now, for the first 10 years of my career, 47 to 57, people said, we can't have him in a film, he's too tall, he doesn't look English, and so didn't get anything worth doing. And, and you didn't look English, your well, Italian blood. blood. That's right, and they said I wasn't typically British, and so, uh, uh, you know, I didn't get a proper job, uh -huh. didn't get a proper part. But in some ways, it was a very good thing, because for 10 years, I went all over the world, all over Europe mainly, uh -huh. uh, and I worked in television, in radio, in theater, in opera, in uh -huh. films. In opera? Yeah. You and sing opera? I did. I 
can. Oh, we, and we must hear you sing. Well, well, I'll think of something. I'll give you some champagne. And, <laughs> and uh, I learned in those 10 years, uh -huh. I learned and kept on learning, uh -huh. and I'm still learning. So when the time came in 1957 that I was offered the opportunity of doing something big, mm -hmm. I was ready. I had the experience, I had the imagination, let's put it mm -hmm. that way. That particular part started my career as an international actor. Mm -hmm. It was very fortunate. Mm -hmm. Boris Karloff, you know his name, everybody yes. knows his name, he was a great actor, great actor, and a great friend of mine. And he said to me one day, the most important thing is find something that other actors cannot do uh -huh. or will not do and if you do it and it's successful and you make your mark and it creates uh -huh. an impact you will never ever be forgotten and you will always be asked to work until the very end uh -huh. and he was right in your case yes uh -huh. and it happened with that part uh -huh. yeah, did, did you actually enjoy uh, um, doing um, that, uh, eating all those... But those... I didn't, you see. You didn't. Yeah, only oh. in one, I think. Only in one. Oh, that's very depressing. It was all done by suggestion. Oh. What you oh, don't it's see... True. It's true. What but you don't see is much more frightening than what you do see. In your private life or, or in the films? Well, as my wife is here this evening, <laughs> oh, yes. the audience, I let's think... Have, <laughs> let's have a toast with your wife. Gita, please join us. I want to make a toast with you. Thank you. Thank you. Christopher? Yeah. Sit down, please. If you want to join us, here's a microphone. Feel, feel free to, to join us. Um, I'm, I'm very happy to, to have known your wife, and especially happy. Especially How long for? For about uh, uh, eight hours now. Oh, I see. <laughs> and especially happy to, to find out when we, we had that marvelous lunch, or got to know one another, we'll that, that you lunch. spent your honeymoon in Portugal. That's right. Did you? Yeah. Was it, was it a success? Well, we're still married. Oh. It's 35 years ago. 35 years ago, 35 nearly. 35 years yes. ago. Yes. Nearly. That's an, another reason, to, another reason to, to be in the Guinness Book uh, of Records. Close, I would say, in our yes. world. In yes. our world. No, I, I came to Portugal um, about 40 years ago to do a film at sea of uh -huh. Cascais and also in Lisboa. Do you remember the name of the film? Yes, but I have no idea what it would be called here. Uh -huh. It was called The Cockle Shell Heroes. Cock? Cockle shell, that's a Cockle kayak. shell here. Kayak, uh, canoe. Uh, here it would be called the uh, Heroes da Treta. <laughs> I'm sure I you're said, right. I said I'm sure you're right, yes. <laughs> but they pay me to do this, you know. Once in a while I have to be fine. Oh, they do? Yes, once in a while I have to be fine. Aren't you lucky? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I did that. And uh, then we, uh, afterwards uh, we came here for our honeymoon and then we came back again with our daughter. And I did a film in Leria, and uh, we came back again to the Algarve, but uh -huh. at the beginning it was here. How, how old is your daughter now, Gita? Do you know she's 32? 32. 32. 32. Uh -huh. And, uh, and you, you live uh, clo close to her, you live... Uh, um, you're a close together. family. No, 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 but I know her house is, is not... As, it's not, not too far away, yes. it's on the other side of the Thames. Uh -huh. We bought her a flat uh, about three or four years ago. Oh, that's so nice. And you're a close family? Uh, yeah, it's very difficult if you're in my profession. I'm serious about this, yes. actually. I know it. It's I, extremely I... difficult if you have children and you travel like I do. Now, when our child was very young and we were going all over the world, for instance, in the last 12 months I've been in 14 countries. Uh -huh. And this is the 15th. Uh -huh and so on. Doing what? When they're working, most of the time, yes. Doing, doing, doing concerts, doing charity shows, or making films, or appearing on a particular occasion, which do you, is do you, a gala do or something. You, do you imagine yourself filthy rich, not working? No. Oh, would I you be happy? No, no, not at all. Life no. would be a bore. Oh, yeah. 
So oh, you're filthy rich and still working? I'm not filthy or no. rich. <laughs> Nor both. <laughs> not both. <laughs> but no, I would never retire. And you enjoy you I would enjoy never retire, work. Of course. Well, yes. Not as much as I did. Can you share with us your age or do you want to keep it a secret? Me? Yes. Um, I will be, I hope, in May I'll be 74. 74 com este aspecto é formidável. Fantástico. Look. People, people from your generation, like my father, who is 76, told me on the phone, oh, poor Christopher, he must be so old oh, now. Yes, well. <laughs> I was a relief to see you in, in such good shape. You look gorgeous. Yeah, well, I think a lot of that has to do with a lot of doing a lot of work. Mm -hmm. You know, I really think that is one of the reasons. Not being stupid. I don't drink a lot. I uh -huh. don't really enjoy it. I don't smoke cigarettes. Okay, that's not always going to kill you, but it doesn't help. Well, do you have um, any, any expensive vice besides... Oh yeah, besides yeah Gitte? I... <laughs> Well, I wouldn't call that advice. That's a no, virtue. <laughs> Gide, uh, do you spend quite a lot of money or no? I don't think so. Uh -huh. Do you think so? No. No, she's marvelous. True. Let she me see doesn't. your fingers. You're not doing like this, no? Well, I go oh, good. Okay. A little bit like that, no. but uh, <laughs> no. otherwise. No, That's... I'm... What I spend money on is rather... One is very obvious. Records. Uh -huh. Mostly opera or classical music. Uh -huh. And otherwise, I'm a collector of... I don't know the word in Portuguese, but I know what it is in Spanish. Distintivos. In Portuguese, it's completely different. It's distintivos. Oh, that's a big difference. It's another different it? word. Yeah. I would never have recognized no. it. No. Difficult. E tu disseste uma frase em português num dos teus filmes. Lembras? I did a film uh -huh. many years ago with Douglas well, Fairbanks. Podemos representar essa parte. Hmm? Do do we can do it uh, right now. You spoke to a general. Didn't you? Uh, yes. So, okay, please get up. I'm the general. Uh, yes. You're Douglas Fairbanks, so you sit down. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, wait a minute. Maybe, maybe you were Douglas Fairbanks. Oh. I think I, think I can remember this. You have to pay this. me for I it. think I can remember this. But I came in and I said, O meu capitão da licença, os rebeldes apontarão o canal contra os portões do cais, não posso sair. Boa! <laughs> Boa! <laughs> Interesting. I don't know. I hope, our, I hope everybody understood. <laughs> our president, uh, our president of uh, our republic, uh, this, uh, who's ending his his uh, work at the moment, Mario Soares, speaks yes. uh, speaks French like you speak uh, Portuguese. I, that's, um, Does that ring a bell? Or well, no? I'm, I've, let me put it this way. I have never heard Mario Soares speak French. Uh -huh. So I don't know well, whether that's a compliment or an insult. No, hopefully for him, <laughs> hopefully for him, he won't hear you speak uh, uh, Portuguese. But I, I do speak French and Spanish no, and Italian, know. but I'm sorry, I do not speak Portuguese. Und Deutsch sprechen Sie Deutsch auch? Deutsch spreche ich auch, ja, ich verstehe ein bisschen und, Deutsch. Und mit Deutschen haben Sie viel gearbeitet, nicht? Ja, ja, viel. genau, genau. Ich habe Deutsch, in Deutsch, äh, ich habe auf Deutsch gedreht, gedreht. Ah. ich habe auf Deutsch gesungen. Gesungen? Ja. Singen Sie mir ein bisschen auf Deutsch, bitte. Auf Deutsch? In Deutsch. In Deutsch. My God. Uh, what, you, wouldn't you rather have it in Italian? Yes. Uh, I'm going to make a record. I made a record recently, uh -huh. The King and I. Uh -huh. I sang The King. I did Paint Your Wagon. I sang the famous mm -hmm. song about the wandering star. And I did the Rocky Horror Show. Mm -hmm. Did that. But that, that's not singing. But I'm going to make a record and I'm going to sing uh, American Western songs, Gilbert and Sullivan, uh -huh. English, of course. French will be Mephisto. Uh -huh. And uh, Russian will be a scene from Boris Godunov. Uh -huh and Italian and Wagner, Wagner and mm -hmm. Verdi. Perhaps we'll, we'll but be happy. the Italian one um, will be uh, Iago. Iago. Iago? Yes, from mm -hmm. the opera Otello. Oh, I, will Otello. Try and, I will try and sing something, but it won't be a lot. Uh-huh. Wait a minute. Credo in un Dio crudel che m'ha creato si mi I cannot hear your name.
good. Well, just a little. You see, uh, I don't think people believe I can sing. They say, no. you sing, you really do yes. sing. But you really do sing. Yeah. And, but you you said um, um, several years ago that uh, you you should have been an opera singer. Yeah. You started yeah. with that. Uh... Well, my great grandparents uh, founded the first opera company in Australia in 1820, 30, uh -huh. something like that. They were opera singers, and um, I was in Sweden making a film. Mm -hmm. In Swedish. Uh, no, in English and then in Swedish. Do you speak Swedish? Yeah, I talk a bit of Swedish, so so. Ah, so it's got a little bit. Yeah, but it's very difficult. 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 It's Um, but uh, I, I was doing... I was doing a lot of work. Oh, I was too. I was too. You are Fred. You are Fred Torkuznetsov. You are going to do a contribution to the Soviet history. Go to the church and read it. You know what that is? You are going to make a big contribution to Soviet history. Go to the hospital and kill him. Okay. Let's see, you have so many films, it's impossible to choose, to choose the best you've done because there are so many uh, films, but uh, we have a clip here, perhaps we could talk about it. Oh, that's it. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's going to be all right. I promise you it's going to be all right. Don't leave me. Just for a minute, just for a minute, just don't leave me alone. But Karen, there are injured people here who need help. Well, you're supposed to take care of me. What's going to happen to me? I'm sorry, my dear, but the doctor needs me. That, uh, that was a film I did, it was the first film that I did after we went to live in Los Angeles. And I w did it in 1976, and it's called Airport 77, and that was with Lee Grant, who's mm -hmm. a very fine actress. I did that film because I wanted to do a film with Jack Lemmon, who is a great friend, mm -hmm. and also I think one of the best actors in the world. Wonderful, wonderful actor. I, mean, uh, really I, wonderful. I second that. One of the very, very best. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had an incredible cast. You know, James Stewart, George mm -hmm. Kennedy, Joseph Cotton, Olivia de Havilland, Ka oh, all the Kathleen Quinlan, of course, Lee Grant. Uh, but I think that people probably imagine that actors have a very easy, glamorous, uh, not very hard working life and everything is done for them or oh, great many things are done for them now in that film I that the plane is under the water some of you probably saw the film the plane goes under the water mm -hmm. and we are still alive and I'm an expert underwater expert so I go down with Jack Lemon and we start to look around to see if we can do anything and the door explodes mm -hmm. in my face and all the water comes in mm -hmm. and uh, the next time you see me I'm all in, in a real mess with all the boxes and everything mm -hmm. and I'm dead and he's got his mask on and his breathing and he comes over to me and mine has been blown off mm -hmm. and he comes over to me and he puts his hand oxygen over my face mm -hmm. 
and then he thumps me here, bangs me here, so breathe, you see. Now, actually, my, my eyes are open and my mouth is open, but I have to close my throat mm -hmm. because if I open it, the mm -hmm. bubbles come out and uh -huh. you see it is a live actor. Uh -huh. So you must be convincing because the camera started there and there was no cut and it did this. You have to look dead. You have to, you have to look completely dead. Well, I've done a bit of that, but underwater, I had to train to do this because I'm not a very good swimmer. And they said, you know, you have to do this underwater in this film. You have to be dead. And then he has to pull you out and then you have to go up to the top of the water. I said, oh, well, yes, that'd be easy. That's no problem at all, you know, thinking they would do it with tricks. Uh -huh. And so I went to the swimming pool in Universal Studios with a great expert who's a German, Manfred Zendar, who was 73 or four, something like me now. And I spent a week, 10 feet underneath, getting used to breathing and seeing, you see. When we shot it, it was 10 meters in a tank. And I had a belt around my waist to keep me down. Uh -huh. And there was the underwater camera, underwater camera, the same camera and the same cameraman who did Jaws mm -hmm. with Spielberg. And he was there, and there were the technicians all in frogmen's suits, and the electricians all in frogmen's mm -hmm. suits with their masks uh -huh. and their apparatus breathing. Uh -huh. And the man on the camera said to me, I could see him because I had the mask on and I was breathing, sitting there, lying there, and he'd do this. In other words, are you ready? Uh -huh. And I would go like that, and then he would go this. Uh -huh. In other words, the camera is turning. When that happened, the first thing that I did, take the mask off, and somebody whom I couldn't see, because I couldn't see anything, took it. And then I had to take a deep breath uh -huh. and hand it to somebody I couldn't see. And just... All of this 10 meters deep? Yes, mm. and stay there like that. Ah. You know, with my eyes open and my uh -huh. mouth open, and no bubbles for over a minute. That's a long time. And I did that for three days, 10 meters underwater. And every time I had to go up, they shouted at me through the side of the tank, uh -huh. breathe out, breathe out, breathe out. Well, I didn't have much left. Uh -huh. And I went Whoosh, like this. I didn't know why. And they told me after I'd done this for three days that if I had not done that, I would have died. Why? Because you get a clot in the blood, in the bloodstream, uh -huh. and it travels up to the brain and like that's it. And after that, they told you? Afterwards, yes. Oh. Yeah. With such friends, you don't need Oh, yeah. Enemies. Well, if anything had happened, they would have said, get another actor. Of course. Mm -hmm. Get another Christopher. Well, I mean, I've had so many accidents in films. I've had so many But you're not, you're, you're not disposable. Your generation is not disposable. The, well, this, I'm the only one left, I think. No, really. There, there's a whole generation of uh, takeaway actors that you have at the moment. That oh, well. Okay. That, Yeah, work yeah. five years and forget all they about come them. They come and they later. go. It's they different with go. your generation. You remind me very much of a gentleman we had here several years ago, several months ago, Omar Sharif. Mm. He's, he's very much he's like you. He's a great you, friend of ours. And, and a good gentleman. Is he a friend of yours? Yes, great friend. And of yours too, Gita. Yes, uh, wonderful man. Where, where, uh, I, I understand he's uh, in Egypt now. I think he lives in Egypt yeah, now. He still yes. lived in France when he was here with us. Really? He was about to oh, move really? to Egypt. Yes. yes. I know he had to move out of France, so he wanted to go home. Do you have many yes. friends? Uh, you, you follow your, your husband quite I a lot. I go with him quite a lot, yes. Uh -huh. Because we've got friends all over the world, and uh -huh. I love to travel, you know. And also, it can be very lonely to be away on location oh. for an yes. actor, to be alone and yes. away for a long, long time. You well, know, you work out all day, and you come home to a hotel room, and you know, uh -huh. it's nice to have somebody around to talk to. True. Well, who, this who, goes who, back, if I may Who are your biggest friends at the moment, from, from the acting business? Well, we don't, oh, I don't know. We don't have so don't many. many. No? I don't know. No. We are friends a lot, but uh, of all businesses, uh -huh. you know, not only in, in, in the film business, uh -huh. in all sort of ways of life and branches. 
There's another thing this that... Goes, I'm sorry, this goes back to what you asked me earlier. Mm. You know, is it possible to have a close family life? Oh. This is the problem. When our daughter was very, very young, she came everywhere all over the world with us. Mm. She's too young to remember. Yes. When she started going to school... Parents are always away. Parents are always away. Mm. And we never flew together. Mm. We always took separate planes, for obvious reasons. One child. Mm -hmm. When she became much older, then we started flying together. But if your parents are on the other side of the world mm -hmm. for most of your life, it's very difficult to keep a yeah. close family connection. I know I have the same problem w with my children. It, you do? Yes, I, I do adopt have? them when they are 18, 19. You adopt and, them when yes, they're 18 and, and then, 19, I see. Uh, okay, let's see a little bit o que é que está a acontecer <risos> no outro canal e depois vamos voltar com o Christopher Lee e saber tudo do encontro dele com o ex senhor Presidente do Conselho Salazar Hello ladies and gentlemen welcome back to the third part of our show tonight with the beautiful opera singer Christopher Lee. <laughs> um, we were talking about uh, your love life, thir 35 years. You'll be 35 years, uh, have 35 years of being married, being together in about several weeks? Yes, in March. In yes, March. we will be I've been, I've been born the 19th of March. Oh, oh we were nice. married on the 17th. Oh, yes. we can have, March is a very special month for, for us. Definitely. <laughs> and, and we shall meet uh, in London in February. I'm, I'm looking forward yeah, to it. Yes. Mm. Um, I have a clip, clip here that has something to do with, with the story you've told uh, about not being able to be with your husband always. I, I understand, for example, when you were turning James Bond, oh, yeah. she was allowed in... in, in no, the... I had to join them later. You know, when they did the Phuket Island scenes yes. in the beginning, these wonderful islands yes. that come up. Uh, no women were allowed to come because in those days, believe it or not, it was full of pirates that came on shore and robbed people and raped people and killed people. So and now it's a resort, isn't it? Yeah, now, and there was no sort of sanitary uh, facilities either. It was very, very rough country. Mm. You felt miserable. And it's only for 24 well, years. Well, I know, but Omar told me he felt miserable two years in the, in the desert doing Lawrence oh, of Arabia. Oh, well, no, Lawrence of Arabia, I mean, that was a different thing. He was a, a year in the desert. Yes and uh, they were living in tents and everything. We were living in a small village. They tried to make it comfortable. And we would go to these islands every day in a boat. And there was only one woman. And that was what we called the... She must, she must have worked quite a lot, eh? Oh, she did. Oh, she did. Uh, but she was what we call the continuity girl. Uh, uh, script yeah. girl. Yes. And you have to have. Yes. And she was marvelous and very uh, famous. The only woman. And... Every day we would go out on these boats to this island, this extraordinary island in the sea off Thailand, which was my island in the story. Uh -huh. Phuket was uh -huh. the village, uh -huh. and the island was called Pang Na. It's called the James Bond Island now. Uh -huh. And we would go out every day, and we saw these houses on bamboo uh -huh. in the water. And the first day I said, uh, what, what, what uh, is going on there? Who are the people who live there? And there was, somebody said something in Thai. I, I didn't understand it. And they, I said, what did he say? He said, they're pirates. I said, real pirates. Yes, drugs, prostitution, and they raid and rape, as my wife said, and attack people and kill people. And I thought, well, that, you know. That's it's a refreshing. Very good re yes, it's refreshing. <laughs> it's encouraging. And that was the reason why I was not allowed to take my wife, and nobody was allowed to take their wives or relatives at all for the first uh -huh. ten days to two weeks. Here's a scene from James Bond and the man with the golden gun. Oh, no. If I could address, if necessary. Yes, as your referee, I will administer it myself. I do not expect wounds, only a clean kill. On my command, each contestant will take 20 pesos. Are you ready, Monsieur Scaramanga? Ready? Are you ready, Monsieur Bond? Ready? 
I will now begin the count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. You vanished there, now you're here. This well, was a, I, I love James Bond the films. Ian Fleming was my cousin. You don't say. Yeah. So, I, so I, you, you know everything about I, James Bond. Everything, everything. And do you know where he got the name from? No. He had a house in Jamaica. In fact, it was called Goldeneye. Uh -huh. That was the name of the house. That's why they've called the new Bond film, uh -huh. Goldeneye. And he had a great friend, an American, uh, who was a bird expert, mm -hmm. ornithologist, mm -hmm. we say. And uh, Ian was writing a book, the first James Bond book, which I think was Casino Royale, mm -hmm. I think. I had a program called Casino Royale. Well, that was the first book, I think, that he wrote. So he copied it from me, perhaps? He said to the... Probably did, <laughs> yes. yes. He probably I, I, got it out very quickly. Yes. He's worried, I expect. They probably told him that, you know, you were this young mm -hmm. genius just writing a book. Thank you. Well, mine was and, the show. And uh, he was talking to this man one day, this friend, this neighbor, who died about a year or two ago at the age of about 88, mm -hmm. 89 in America. An American. And he said, I'm writing a story about a whatever, and I'm going to have a hero, I'm going to have a leading character. Mm -hmm. Do you mind if I borrow your name? And James Bond said, no, go ahead. Uh -huh. He actually existed. Actually gave him permission to use his mm -hmm. name. And James Bond wrote a book, and I've got it. Ah. Birds of the West Indies. So that's where he got it that's from. Nice. Now, this hmm. picture you saw just now, the character was called Scaramanga. Uh -huh. Scaramanga is a Greek name. Uh -huh. The docks in Athens are called Scaramanga. Mm -hmm. And I have met a Mr. Scaramanga. Mm -hmm. But the reason that Ian called this character Scaramanga was because when he was at school at Eton College in England, there was a man there called Scaramanga whom he hated. And so he thought, I'll make him the villain in my next uh. story. But Speaking about villains, you, you yes. knew Salazar. Hmm? You knew, Sal you knew Salazar, you got to know him. I well, he was, was not a villain. once presented to him. He was yeah. a character. I was presented to him once. A most amazing man. It, one, it, one of the great historical enigmas. It was not usual for him to, uh, to get to know actors. And well, no, I think it was, he was because very we were reserved. making this film, you see. Uh, and uh, we were presented to him in Lisbon. And what, what did he say? Senhor Christopher, muito prazer. I have no idea. I don't remember because... Because I don't think he said anything. He just uh, we were just because he spoke. He was, he was if he was English, he would no, speak think, uh, with a voice uh, like this. Uh, Did he? Yes, yes. I don't think he spoke. English. Even that he was he wasn't a typical dictator because he was no, low no. profile. No, no, because say, dictators like Mussolini, oh. like Hitler. Mit einer dieser als Verkehrs- und Hafenzentrum wichtigen Stadt ist wieder. Ein entscheidender Sieg errungen. You, you I first, saw him. You, Hitler? Yes. Did he recognize you or not? Well, he waved. <laughs> but it was more like that. <laughs> I did see him. In, 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 uh, in the 1930s, in 1934, I was in Munich. And uh, I was pretty young then. And uh, let me just say this: I'm not doing any comparisons. Our dictator was, well, no, no, have no, several no, defaults, not but it has all. nothing to do. He was no, a, Dr. Salazar was very much an enigma, of course, and he was not a much publicized person. Yes, he Hitler was was something different very, thing. Hitler was a great actor. Yes, and oh. Hitler rehearsed all his speeches in front of the mirror. You know? uh, he did. And, and uh, Goebbels was a fine producer. And the very lucky one sometimes, yeah. too, yes, because... Uh, the other day I got to see those films by Leni Riefenstahl. Oh, yes, The Triumph des Willens. They are perfect. 
Wonderful film. And she started doing all the travelings with oh, the yeah? cameras oh, yeah? and all oh, the... Yeah. Very strange. I saw him at one of these big rallies, and uh, I must say, I didn't understand what he was saying. They didn't speak German then. But the atmosphere was unbelievable, mm -hmm. because everything was going long before he appeared, mm -hmm. you know, the, the songs and the drums, boom, yes. boom, and everything, and all the lights and everything. And then finally, 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 somebody got up. I don't know who it was. I was too uh -huh. far away. Probably Hess or somebody. And uh -huh. said, der Führer, kommt der Führer, Sieg, heil. And everybody started screaming, shouting, and yelling. Uh -huh. And then one light, everything went dark. And one light, <laughs> like that. And one little, small figure came up. And everybody was screaming. Like in a Michael Jackson concert. Well, I guess it was a bit. Well, Michael Jackson and, uh, is, whiter, is whiter than Hitler. Yeah, but, uh, he's a little whiter, yes, and, uh, and not an Austrian either. No. And uh, he, he, he appeared and just stood there. Uh -huh. This is incredible acting. Yes. Because he, so. he knew he had total control. Your character is when you do an, an, an SS officer. Oh, your yeah, I played perfect. Them. I played them. You're because perfect. I had experience of it. Uh -huh. I was in and you are not an evil person. Well, is he evil? Was. <laughs> if I was, no. I must disappoint you. He's not. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we, we, there are some nice persons. Uh, we talked about that. I don't want to say names, but that you got to know that are the other way around. They look sweet and oh, nice. And yeah, I mean, I, I'm not going to name them, but this, Ma uh, you know, it's, everybody has their image uh -huh. of somebody they admire and they want to meet and they they're excited about and uh -huh. so on and so forth. And, and, then, and then you meet them, and uh -huh. sometimes it's a big disappointment, and that's happened to me. Don't go away, we shall come back. <laughs> they had three questions. The first one, your real name, Carandini Lee, Carvagliosi Lee, or Metapatali? Your, n <laughs> your name is not Metapatali, no? No, not Carvagliosi Lee, but Carandini Lee. Your mother was Christopher. Carandini. Frank Carandini. Lee. Carandini Lee. Carandini yes. is uh, Italian. Your yes. mother was Italian. Yes. And not uh, and from Modena. The family is the family from Modena. From Modena. Yeah. Mm. You know, well, I have something uh, from Modena in my place that I, I always use: assetto di Modena. Oh yeah. yeah. Vinegar from Vinegar, Modena. Yeah. Is perfect. Mm -hmm. But, uh, it's assetto. Like balsamic, yes. Mm. Assetto balsamico. balsamico di Modena. Uh, dark brown aceto. and perfect. Aceto, aceto. Ecco, itali italiano. Prima di italiano. Sì, ma è strutto. Italiano, like, like your Russian. Like my Russian, I don't yeah. speak. Yeah. I eat Italian quite a lot. I love Italian food. Yeah. Where have you been born? In London, in Carrasida d'Anciens, or in Strat Carrasida d'Anciens? What did you say? Carrasida d'Anciens in England. Don't you know it? Where? <laughs> Do you know? <laughs> 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 you, got you know Stratford upon Avon? Yes. You go Stratford upon Avon, at mesmo até ao final de Stratford upon Avon. Pois antes de chegar à Alhandra, porta da Estrada de Palmeiras. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. 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 I'm sorry. It's, uh, no, it's okay. I, I should have understood. Okay. It was your Welsh accent. Oh, yes. yes. And your secret service was, service was the A S A S. You worked in the SAS, which was a big responsibility and uh, perhaps something to, to be proud of at the time. You fought in World War II? I was in, in the Royal I, Air Force? Royal Air Force, yes. And uh, later I, on? Uh, later on, Special Forces, yes. A period you remember with, with pride? Yes. I was very lucky. I was with some very brave and very remarkable people who gave their lives to make it a better world. And look at it now. You're not very uh, glad with, with our 90s. The World War II was supposed to be the war to end wars, wasn't it? Yes. Look at today. Let's look at something a bit more funnier. Yeah. What on earth is going on? I leave you people alone for five minutes, and what am I find when I get back? I don't 
to chaos. I trust that's not the brain hormone that that creature's drinking. Good boy. Nice boy. That's a good creature. Now, let's talk this over. I can get you diseases. You'd like that, wouldn't you? <laughs> here for the future. When you introduce genetic material of research quality to a life form such as ours, which is possessed of a, a sort of, a, I hesitate to use the word, atavism, but let us say a highly aggressive nature. For example, that fellow over near the, um, I believe there's a common bat of the order Coroptera, the only mammals I might add capable of can fly. That will be of crucial usefulness where you'll be going. What does he mean where he'll be going? We can't let them get away. All they have to do is to eat three or four children and there'll be the most appalling publicity. <laughs> there it is. The apple. The city's so nice they named it twice. Check it out one time, won't you? Is this, is this fun doing? Oh, wonderful. You actually uh, wonderful. acted with the dolls or not? I think dog, that wasn't a dog. Dolls. That was a gra oh, yes, we did. Sometimes yes, sometimes mm. no. And uh, it was a marvelous experience, and great fun for me, you know, to be in a comedy of that kind. It's sort of escape. Oh, yeah. And also the thing with the bat, I think, was a bit of a joke, you know? Uh -huh. Course. I think, a little one. It was very private. Uh, yeah, and uh, Joe Dante, the director, is really my favorite director today, and he's a wonderful person to work with, because he understands actors, and he likes them. It doesn't always happen, you know. I know. And that scene, the voice was the voice of Tony Randall. Oh. Yeah. And, uh, well, all the rest, of course, were special effects, mm -hmm. done by Rick Baker. But these things are this big. Uh-huh. They're this big. Sometimes they're not there. You were looking at a tiny little red light. Uh -huh. And you have to follow it. Sometimes they are there, as you saw in that. The red light they, they, in post-production, they, the the, they, uh, the, they put in the... No, the extraordinary thing is, uh, I don't want to give away too many secrets, but the extraordinary thing is that you are playing a scene and something is... One of these is standing on the table uh -huh. and underneath the table are four men one man is doing the mouth, one man is doing the eyes, one man is doing the hands, one man is doing the feet. And they're all doing this under the table. And you have, of course, to ignore them. I mean, you can't be distracted. But it was a wonderful experience. It was great, great fun. And I hope to do another film with Joe Dante, because mm. I liked him very much. And he's a good, close friend. If I was to be a millionaire producer and to, tell, and to say to you, Christopher, let's do the film this year, who would you choose? 
Name me a director. Uh, the greatest director I've ever worked with, the greatest, was Billy Wilder. But he's nearly 90 years old, uh -huh. so he wouldn't want to direct a film. It would depend... You did, you did a film I loved with him. Uh, the Private Life the private of Sherlock Holmes, Holmes, yes. Uh, sadly, the man who played Sherlock Holmes, I played his brother, uh -huh. uh, Sir Robert Stevens, died not very long ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was... That was tragedy, because so he was a young man, mm. 64, you know, he wasn't an old man. So, forget about Billy, Billy Wilder. No, forget about Billy Wilder. I suppose it would have to be uh, Steven Spielberg, who, whom uh -huh. I have filmed with, made no. a film with him, uh, or Joe Dante. Uh -huh. And I think it would depend on the subject. So which subject will, shall we choose? I think what we call black comedy. Uh -huh. That is something that can be a little scary, but can be also very yeah. funny. Spielberg would do that uh, quite okay, don't you think? So? Oh yes, but so would Joe Dante. Oh, then we have a problem there. Then we have a problem. We have, don't to have have both any coins. Of them. And a leading lady? Oh, well, um, Michelle Pfeiffer? Okay. For funny, for Spielberg, for Pfeiffer, see you in about two months. We'll start filming in about April. Okay, Christopher. It's okay with Thank me. you very much. I loved meeting you. Thank you. Christopher Lee Pigito. Thank you, Thank you.